When you think of open world sandbox games, what comes to your mind? Maybe Grand Theft Auto, Saints Row, Just Cause, or Far Cry? Those are all great examples that we have seen in recent years, but what about the name Crackdown? Does that ring any bells? Does that bring any good memories of a game where you play as a superhuman cop whose job it is to destroy criminals in their home turf? Yes? Well, good news, because that's what we're going to explore today, because I wanted to see if anyone remembers Crackdown 1. The premise of the game is straightforward. Pacific City, a large, sprawling city, is now suddenly overrun with violent criminals. Three primary groups rule the city, and with the common police unable to tackle the problem at its source, you're called upon to do the job. You take the role of an agent from a group called the Agency. Wow, so creative, right? And here's the kicker. Your character is no peasant like the other cops or criminals on the streets right now. You've been given a massive edge over your enemies as your character is genetically enhanced and once you start collecting enough experience orbs, you'll find that you easily defy physics and conventional tactics. The three gangs that terrorize the entire city are Los Muertos, The Volk, and Shai Jen, and they can be destroyed only if you take out their leaders. And the nice part is, the game gives you the opportunity to fight them straight from the start of the game. But get this, you're going to be way too underpowered to even get past their bodyguards, so it's going to take some time to upgrade your character into a more formidable single-man army. The process of getting your agent into tip-top shape for battle is simple. Find some bad guys hanging around the city and turn them into Swiss cheese. Once you do this, you'll notice that these little orbs in the aftermath pop out. Go ahead and collect them, and slowly but surely, your agent is going to get more powerful over time. The benefits of upgrading your agent spans across all aspects, from fighting all the way to traversing the map with ease. With enough upgrading, you will literally become a quasi-Spider-Man jumping around Pacific City with impunity, both in the fact that gravity somehow doesn't affect you at all and that no criminal can stand between you and their master. You see, you're free to completely roam the city. Wherever you think you can go, you probably can get there. But here's the thing. Without upgraded abilities, it's going to be very difficult to take on the city, much less even go to the places that are hard to reach. So with upgrading your character at the center of the game, it's mindless fun in itself to go and find some bad guys to beat up. And another great feature that Crackdown offers is for a friend to join you. Now, here's a funny story that I remember from Crackdown. So, you guys remember Split Screen, right? I always thought that the game had split screen because there was this video where somebody clipped two videos of gameplay and made it look like there were two players playing at the same time on one console. And despite trying virtually every option in the game, I could never get this supposed split screen mode to ever appear. In fact, I thought the system link in the back of the box meant split screen. Obviously, I was wrong. Anyways, Crackdown 1, although very much forgotten about, still holds up surprisingly well in today's landscape. And graphics-wise, the cell-shaded graphics provide a comic book-style look to the game, which, in my opinion, helps emphasize the fact that your goal is to essentially become the hero that the city needs to defeat crime. With 21 bosses to fight, there's ultimately not too much story or replay value in the game once you max everything out. The aesthetics and setting of the game reminisce of the cyberpunk-esque landscape that the city is devolving into, with an authoritarian police state and rising crime rates due to violent and well-funded gangs being purposefully placed to fight one another. And as it's revealed in the ending, the agency was behind all of the chaos and now having proved the success of their experiment in Pacific City, now they plan to reproduce the same situation across the entire world for total control over the population. 
So that's pretty much the gist of what Crackdown is all about, from the first installation all the way for the next two mediocre sequels. But say, where did this idea of Crackdown even come from? Who came up with this idea? Meet David Jones, the founder of DMA Design, Real Time Worlds, and Cloud Gen. He's the man responsible for creating the franchise that is now the world's second best selling video game. Currently, he serves as the director of cloud strategy for Epic Games ever since Cloud Gen was bought out by them. And for those of you who don't recognize his first company, DMA Design, would you happen to believe that it is now known as Rockstar North? Yep, the same one that's responsible for all of these iconic games. Jones found the kickstart to his game developing career in 1991 with the release of Lemmings, a puzzle game, and after some time, the concept for a game that blended the fighting aspect of then popular games with the strong driving mechanic set the stage for the original Grand Theft Auto in 1997. From here, Jones would experiment around with the idea of an open world based game and ultimately conceptualized the idea for Crackdown by essentially reversing the formula of the original Grand Theft Auto. So instead of having linear missions that a player would have to meet the requirements for, Jones and his team, which consisted of many developers from the first two Grand Theft Auto games, wanted to let the player decide on, on what they were going to do there would be no restriction on what they could do. How do we reward somebody for just having fun? With that sentiment in mind, the game was developed with an emphasis on the sandbox and open world aspect, in which progression would be dictated by the player's willingness to collect orbs. And the best way to do that is by exploring the city. When you explore the city, chances are you're going to find some enemies and by eliminating them you get these orbs. Over time, your character becomes more powerful to take on more enemies at once and with enough time, your character will be on the way to taking out each of the bosses that control the city one at a time. Moving throughout the city is also another challenge that will eventually resolve itself once you begin upgrading. As in the beginning, you're more than likely going to be driving around in vehicles that come ready in the agency garage or vehicles that you borrow from the common citizen. But as your character gets faster with agility over time, you'll notice that driving just isn't as fun as jumping your way through the city to get to the next battle. Arguably the most memorable aspect that most people who've played Crackdown is by and large the transformations that the vehicles perform once you max out the driving skill set. The fact that you can turn some boring car into a monster machine is another surprise that comes, not only making your car more resistant to the increasingly difficult battles, but also prove that your character is not to be trifled with. On a side note, the sequels Crackdown 2 and 3 didn't have this amazing and memorable feature which probably contributes to their lukewarm reception in addition to all of the other downgrades that were made. And when we look at the development of Crackdown 1, there were no concessions to downgrade any aspect of the game. In fact, several components of the game were purposefully upgraded, first of which was the primary engine on which the game would render the sprawling map that the player could explore, given that the Xbox 360 was brand new technology at the time. Similar to the third Grand Theft Auto, Crackdown found itself transitioning to a powerful 3D world through the RenderWare 4 engine. Furthermore, the developers saw that playtesters would often try to get to the top of the tallest building in the game, which got them to add so many achievements for the game that Microsoft ended up pushing the capacity of how many achievements a game could have. And lastly, Crackdown wasn't even expected to be a commercial success. In fact, Jones even stated that because Crackdown didn't look pretty in screenshots, that the demo would have to win people over on what the game was about. Still, with worries that players still wouldn't desire the game even with all of the explanations of how epic a fully upgraded agent would be, 
Microsoft decided to pair the release of the Halo 3 multiplayer beta with Crackdown, a move that would later help boost Crackdown's visibility as players who wanted to play the multiplayer trial of Halo would have to buy Crackdown and chances were they would give it a shot. And sure enough, the scheme was a success. Crackdown managed to find itself a highlight as the many excited fans of Halo also stopped by to play Crackdown. And as the years went by, the series would find itself expanding only through two sequels, both of which were disappointments, especially when you compare them to how the first game played. And the first game would shortly later receive three small, free DLC that would add new vehicles, weapons, and keys to the city which arguably was the best part of the DLC, where it essentially acted as a giant cheat code mode where you could instantly upgrade your character to the highest level, allowing you to wreak havoc straight off of the bat. And with that, Crackdown 1, a classic and memorable experiment of a game that many people remember. The cell shaded graphics helped make the game look a little more timeless and the mechanics, which could be argued as half-baked, give the game a lifespan that, although short, provided players with great memories of nothing but fun while destroying gangs on the streets of Pacific City as a literal superhero. So while Crackdown may have faded into the background and obscurity over the years, overshadowed by these other big blockbuster open world titles, it still remains quite memorable for those who have played the game. Given that the game has so many unforgettable features, from being able to jump your way across the city, the iconic director's voice, vehicles transforming into a formidable transport, ragdoll physics, to the arm swing that your character does when they're falling through the air, all of these things come together to make one of the most memorable games that gave freedom to the player to experiment in a sprawling sandbox environment and rewarded them for having fun.